As COVID-19 restrictions ease, more people are getting back to work and traveling, and that means more cars on the road. But as we all try to get back to some sense of normalcy, has there been an increase in crashes and just downright bad driving? News 8's Kirsten Holmes is live in Miramar tonight with some answers. Kirsten? Yeah, Marcella, all signs point to yes. I'm here at the I-15 overpass in Miramar, and even over my shoulder, I've seen drivers speeding. On the way here, a driver drifted into the lane with me and my photographer in the car, giving us quite the scare. And CHP and other drivers we talked to say that all of that works together to be part of a really big problem. It's gotten way worse, uh, the, especially on the freeways. Dave Taylor says the driving wasn't great before coronavirus, but after is a whole other ball game. It started when the stay at home order was there, and so there was hardly anybody on the freeway. So they thought, well, heck, you know, I can go as fast as I want. Now that everybody's back to work, you think you might tone it down a little, but it hasn't. It hasn't. It's dangerous. And Salvador Castro with CHP agrees. Castro also says folks just aren't paying attention. A lot of crashes that we respond to are either uh, uh, drivers crashing into couches, mattresses, anything that will be dumped on the roadways. And speeding, Castro says, is nearly out of control. We went out on State Route 163 for a couple times and the average speed there was about 95. And that's even with us driving. I mean, people, people will pass us like nothing, like if we're standing still. And it's not just San Diego. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says speeding is up 22% across America since the pandemic started. There's also been an increase in impaired driving. Pre-pandemic, 50% of drivers in traumatic crashes had drugs or alcohol in their systems. This year, that number is now up to 65% and fewer people are wearing their seat belts. Drivers we talk to say they are seeing all types of bad driving here in our area. They don't like you to stay in front of them. They want to cut you off. They use bad words when you have with the kids. No, no turn signals. No signals. Switching lanes. I almost got hit the other day. Side swipe. They were just cruising. It is pretty dangerous. Yes, yeah, so we're going to give you some tips on how you can drive safely out there. And these tips you may have heard before. First off, slow down, wear a seat belt, and pay attention. And most of all, buckle up. It could save your life or the lives of those around you. Marcella, Carlo, Kirsten, back to you. I have noticed people just coming right up on my tail and then getting around. Yeah. I'm like, there's four lanes. You, should, you can pass me. And also, the turn signals. I noticed people aren't using their turn signals, just like that, that person said. It could save a life. Thinking about the drivers in front of you and around you could save your life or the lives of other people. We all got to work together out there. Yeah, and I know that stretch of the road you're looking at back there, it's much worse about midnight these days, worse than it's ever been. It Thanks, Kirsten. Mm. Seven people are dead after a terrifying bus crash south of the border. A camera caught it all as the bus missed a turn, flipped on its side and slid off the road. This happened last night just outside of Rosarito in an area that doesn't have the emergency resources needed to handle such a huge tragedy. News 8 Steve Price has more on the rescue effort. A horrific crash near Rosarito. A private bus chartered for a day of fun flips over. At this point, it does not appear that anyone from our county was on board, but several people were killed. Dozens were injured, and the accident was caught on camera. Surveillance video shows the first bus making the right turn without any problems. But watch as the second bus comes through. The driver loses control. The bus flips and slides off the road. Seven people dead and about 16 hospitalized, some of those gravely injured. Reporter uh, Vicente Calderon with Tijuana Press says it was a chaotic scene and making a bad situation worse, the bus was on its side. So crews had to go in through the roof and some passengers were pinned under part of the wreckage. When the bus was rolled over on, outside the, the main highway, was difficult to get everybody out. And we are hearing that at least a couple of persons will be losing their limbs. Vicente added that two of the victims had injuries so severe, authorities are calling them unrecognizable. A triage area was immediately set up to help identify those with the most serious injuries, but this spot where the accident happened, just outside Rosarito, doesn't have the resources to handle such a huge catastrophic event. So many victims had to wait for the help they needed until crews could come down from Tijuana. 
they have to bring a lot of ambulances and rescue vehicles because the ones in Rosarito were not enough due to the magnitude of this tragedy. There were around 50 people on board, some of the injured just 15 years old. They were taken to several hospitals across the region. At first, authorities thought the bus was filled with workers from a factory, but they later confirmed the passengers were actually local hospitality employees who hired the bus to enjoy a day out of town in Tecate. This was a fun trip who went wrong. Authorities confirmed the driver of the bus took off after the crash and still hasn't been located. The owner of the bus company has also disappeared. The investigation into their whereabouts and why the accident happened is continuing. Steve Price, News 8. San Diego County will spend the next six days in the less restrictive yellow tier ahead of the state's reopening June 15th. That means museums, zoos and aquariums can now open up at 100% capacity. Restaurants, breweries, wineries and gyms can increase to 50% capacity. Bars that do not serve food can open indoors at 25% capacity. Yellow tier status also loosens restrictions on outdoor live events and amusement parks. If you'd like a shot at winning California's Vax for the win for a chance at up to one and a half million dollars, there's still time to get your shot if you haven't already. If you've received at least one COVID-19 vaccine dose anywhere in the state of California, you will automatically be entered. This Friday is the final $50,000 drawing with 15 winners winning that prize. And then next Tuesday, June 15th, 10 people will win $1.5 million. Each one of you get this chance because you took a step to protect yourselves, protect your families and communities, and frankly, give a level of protection to our state that is going to help us get through this once and for all. And even more incentive, the first 2 million Californians to start and finish the vaccination process after May 27th will receive a $50 gift card. The Marine Corps is relieving a general of duty following last summer's deadly training exercise off San Clemente Island. Major General Robert F. Castelvi was removed of com as commander of First Marine Division at Camp Pendleton as a result of the tragedy. Nine service members were killed when their amphibious assault vehicle took on water while returning to their ship last July. A grisly series of events leads to a homicide investigation in North County. A vehicle fire that gravely injured a man in Escondido led deputies to a home in San Marcos where they found a woman's body. The body was discovered last night inside a home on El Toro Lane near Borden Road. Investigators were still on the scene today, but so far few details have been released. Anyone with information about these incidents should call the San Diego County Sheriff's Department. We still don't know for sure what caused that mysterious boom that was heard and felt all around the county last night. It happened just before 830. We received a lot of phone calls, emails and social media asking us about that sound. Lots of buzz generated here on Twitter. Miramar Air Station says it did not have any planes in the air at the time. Camp Pendleton is conducting artillery training, which could be the source, though that has not yet been confirmed. And Carlo, I know you Boom. felt it.